imagine the college experience, because this is how I envision it after going through it and after teaching in it. You show up on the first day of class, right? The first day of school, okay, and you have a hundred grand just burning a hole in your pocket, which you got from a bank or the federal government or something, right? And so now you need to figure out what you're going to do. What are you going to do in your classes? Well, unfortunately, the way that I envision it, let's imagine that you are going to be in, in school for four years. That's eight semesters. You're going to take three classes a semester that are taught via the traditional method, didactic lecture, somebody talking to you for 50 minutes at a time. Okay, so that's three courses per semester. Now, that's 40 classes each semester per course. And for the college students in here, know that this is being generous on the low side, we'll say 40 slides per hour, right? I mean, because they really try and cram like 50 or 60 in there. right? So who can tell me about, over the course of those four years, how many PowerPoint slides will you have looked at by the time you're done? Just guess. <laughs> Little high, but because you were the first one. OK, so this is the college experience. Okay, so you show up, and you know what this is, right? This was one of those really fancy vending machines, right? So you can kind of choose your flavor, choose your major, and you're just going to put a bunch of money in, and you're going to get a bunch of PowerPoint slides out. But because it's college and you're paying a lot of money, guess what? We're going to give you a very intelligent person to stand at the front of the room and read them all for you. <laughs> right? That's, that's what we're doing right now. See, the problem is there, there are three big problems for this. One, it's a waste of your time, and it is a waste of the professor's time. Because remember, the professors are doing research and many other things. They are not primarily there to teach it for the most part. Okay, so they can only put limited effort into it. So it's a waste of everybody's time to do it that way. The second thing is, how do we learn? Okay, so you remember that old adage of, if you give a man a fish, you can feed him for a day or a week, depending how generous you are with your fish. But if you teach him how to fish, feed him for the rest of his life. So you're not learning in context. You're just being assaulted with information and then being asked to go away for four weeks at a time and then come back having memorized everything and then being asked to take a test. Okay, so one of the big problems I have with this is that we want to generate leaders and innovators and thinkers. This method generates people that can memorize a lot of things, regurgitate it, and then purge it because in the next semester they have a couple hundred thousand, well, a couple thousand more slides to look at. Right? So that's one of the big issues. Because, and it also, it doesn't, it doesn't help with retention. You're just memorizing things, and these facts are gone. So we need to figure out a way to fix this. Okay, and so what I would propose is that we need more active learning in the classroom. Now, what is active learning? Active learning is essentially redefining the term learning. So the acquisition of knowledge can happen anywhere. The problem is a lot of the older professors, they sat in lecture halls and they had, they didn't have PowerPoint, most of them. They had overheads or chalkboards. Okay, so they just know what they learned and they're teaching the same way. But that can happen anywhere now. Look at Khan Academy. Look at all of the online material you can get. Let's move that out of the classroom. Do it at home. Do it in the car. Do it at the gym. You can just accumulate this stuff anywhere. But in the classroom, that's where you need to be challenged. That's where you're going to learn how to think. So the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences did a study last year, and this actually backs it up. Because in the STEM area, science, technology, engineering, and math, Students that learn in an active learning environment did much better by at least a half a grade than their counterparts that learned in a traditional lecture. In addition, those that learn in a traditional lecture were 55% more likely to fail the course. So there is some positive in active learning. And also the students really enjoy it. And I'm going to show you how much in just a, just a minute. We need to implement more active learning because it also learns in context. We need to remember things. We need to leave this institution being able to think on our feet. 
and just being able to think. So how do we do that? Well, what we need to do is we need to convince certain folks, like the administration, to put a value on teaching. We need to teach the teachers how to teach. They need to be able to take time out. So maybe we pay for a grad student for a semester or give them a semester off for a course. They need to learn how to teach. Because no one's ever taught them. A PhD does not teach you how to teach. It teaches you how to fail at experiments a lot of the time. And a couple of them work, and you get a PhD. But you do not learn how to teach. So we need to teach them how to teach, because they are not being taught that at the moment at all. So we teach them how to teach, and then what do we do? We implement it in the classroom. And that's one of the things that I really want to focus on, because that's where the retention happens. Okay, so in my medical school lectures, I sit in the back sometimes for some of the other professors, and after about six or seven minutes, which is how long you've been listening, this is what's on every single laptop. Okay, and I imagine it's campus-wide. Okay, so this is what you're going to see. Because they've checked out. Because there's no incentive for them to listen. You've given them the PowerPoint slides. You're just reading off of the slides for the most part. This stuff is being echoed. What's the incentive to even show up? So I think active learning will put butts in the seats and eyes on the professor, which is really what we need to address. What's the role of the teacher? See, the teacher is not teaching in the way that they need to be right now. So what I want to give you in my last two minutes is an example of how I do this. Because you're saying, well, yeah, these are great ideas, little man, but how do you do it? Well, I'm going to show you. So I have a really fun lecture that I give on sexually transmitted infections in the College of Medicine. And what I did was it seemed natural to make it a battle of the sexes. Right, so we have the ladies up there, we can do it. We have the men down here, we can do it too, right? So we have me in the referee's jersey, and we go through cases and questions. They have to think, and they have to answer questions. And that's the idea. They were really actually, they, they were like, oh, they were really into it. They studied, they learned the material. But now, they come to the classroom, they know what they know, and they know what they don't know by the time they leave. But they're learning it in context, and they're going to remember it. So what I want to show you next is the last question. It came down to the last question, of course. And I want you to think about the last time you left a lecture with this kind of response. There we go. I just want to get reactions here. <laughs> So the men pulled that one off, and they were humble in victory as always. Um, so, but the point is, everybody had a really good time. But they also learned a lot. And they were able to show me what they've learned. And they're going to do that before we get to the test. So it relieves a lot of anxiety. Okay, because remember when I said you were paying $100,000 for that vending machine? What I want to do is change that. This isn't what you're paying $100,000 for. This is. You're paying for the expertise of your faculty. That's who's going to teach you how to use the information, how to apply it. That is the value of your education. You leave here being able to answer those crazy Google interview questions because you can think on your feet. Thank you very much.